Thanks so much, everyone, and welcome back. This is truly a 911 type message. Um, follow your instincts, people. I don't know how else to say it. Uh, you really have to follow your instincts out here. Um, I received a disturbing call yesterday, and it was disturbing. Uh, particularly because I saw it coming. I did see it coming. Uh, last year, a gentleman in his early 30s, um, just a lovely, lovely individual, um, had invested a lot of time uh, in his life, invested a lot of time in himself, uh, climbed that ladder of life, just many, many things going for him. Um, the looks, um, the career, um, the heart, you name it. And he reached out on a referral, um, was seeing a young lady, not, not too deep into the relationship, three or four months, and he confided that he was extremely attracted to her physically, strong physical connection, um, but he was also quite concerned with some behaviors that he was seeing, and as he described it, on one hand, Sheila, she's just, you know, almost syrup, like syrupy sweet, and on the other hand, there is just something about her that is off. That is almost, it's almost like a venom. And she manipulates me. Um, I feel like I'm in a position where I'm needing to compromise um, myself. He was very, very close with his uh, family, his mother, his sister, and his brothers and his father. And, um, you know, she used a lot of manipulation tactics because she knew he was very physically attracted to her manipulation tactics uh, to get in the way um, of his relationship with his family as well as with his friends. And he described a couple incidents where she was on the verge of getting physical with him. This um, syrupy, sweet demeanor could switch on and off like a light. And he said, you know, I, I know it sounds strange, but there's really a, a part of me. I'm, I'm borderline frightened of her. And, you know, we did a couple of exercises, just clarifying, clearing his mind. And I really encouraged him to listen to his gut instinct and he had repeatedly said, my, my gut instinct is telling me, get out of the situation and get out now. And I thought that is what he had planned to do. Now, you have to understand, some of the folks, I may only have a couple conversations, just, just depends. And I had not heard anything. I thought, well, you know, he came to his senses, got out of it. And then I got the call. Um, he was in his mom's home, uh, very shaky voice. And he said, I'm, I should have listened. I should have listened. And went on to explain that while he was half asleep, he had had a conversation with her recently um, it's time to end this. Um, it's not going to work out. And thought that she really understood it or she pretended that she understood it. Got very quiet. Uh, fell asleep. And when he was half asleep, half in, half out, uh, she attacked him. She attacked him. And there were injuries. Uh, thank you, God. He's going to make it. But I saw it coming. I know that he saw it coming. And folks, I know it's very difficult for kind-hearted people. You want to give folks a chance. 
Uh, Sometimes the best chance you can give someone is to move along about your business and give them a prayer and hope that they get the help that they need. Um, There's all manner of quirks, issues, problems that a person can have. I'm not talking about quirks here. I'm talking about an uneasy feeling. And I remember him saying, I'm uneasy. I don't rest well. I don't, I don't necessarily feel well when she's around. People, look, that is the Holy Spirit dealing with you, okay? That is the sixth sense kicking in, and, and God help me. Uh, there's been one or two times in life I myself ignored and paid the price. You got to know when you see behaviors creeping out, that disturb you, when you sense things, when you feel things, the feeling must be honored. It it must be honored because oftentimes that's your angels working with you. They are working with you and, and trying to prevent it. Many people I've talked to have shared with me, Sheila, if I'm honest with myself, there were things very early on. There were things very early on that were flags and I just kept going with it. And, you know, it, it breaks my heart to have to just go take such a deep dive into it. But I feel like I have to get the word out. There are things that is just, and believe me, I'm a trained professional. I've gone to school uh, many years. I've studied this even beyond formal training, the the psychology, the psyche of the uh, human nature and human emotions and what can happen to a person over a lifetime. Listen very carefully. You can't always see it on someone's face. You can't always see it by how they're dressed. I mean, we go by these superficial cues. Sometimes the only thing you have to rely on is the discernment of the Holy Spirit. It, and I myself, even sitting across from people, like I said, highly trained professional. Um, there's been a couple that nearly bamboozled me. Um, I'm going to share a a video. I'm going to go into detail in this story in a video, but I will tell you that at one point, I was um, part of uh, parole uh, panels that would be responsible for, you know, letting um, um, the judicial system sign off and know when someone is ready to go home. And sometimes, you know, people, you, you've done a certain amount of time, you come up for parole and you, you plead your case. And I recall there was one particular gentleman um, had, had done his time. He was up for early release and everyone on that panel and he, he looked good. He was talking the right way, um, saying all the right things. And everyone on that panel was ready to sign that piece of paper. And I will tell you it's, uh, chills. I was getting chills and I just, it was just a feeling. It was a block. It was like, no, no, don't do it. Don't do it. And I was not willing to sign off. Now, it had to be a majority. It had to be a majority. And I was in the minority. Now, how do you tell people uh, he's, he's talking right? He's been a model uh, prisoner in here. But the Holy Spirit is telling me something different. Now, how do you say that? Uh, I was in something of impossible situation. But I'll tell you, discernment, the spirit of discernment will tell you. And sure enough, they let him out. (laughs) And it wasn't a month until he, um, I don't even want to share what he did, but I, you know, it, it wasn't anything about how he looked. Like I said, he was saying the right thing, but it was an uneasiness. It was an uneasiness. And that's how the spirit will work with you. You will feel things. You will sense things. And to, to give you the most obvious clue, what you feel and what you sense is not divine and righteous. 
that's how you know because it's that foul essence. It's telling you something is wrong. And similar, uh, you may be dealing with someone and you just, it is a lovely feeling. The aura, you can feel it and you know it deep in your spirit. Perhaps they hadn't even said too much to you, but you can sense that is a decent person. Now, it happens all the time, but you have to honor it both ways, folks. You have to honor it both ways. Um, I have sat with people who have shared uh, very deep things, very personal things, and I praise God in heaven that they reached out to get some help and assistance. These are not things uh, that a person can get over by themselves. It's got to be the hand of God and often uh, some professional assist and not to say that they're bad people. It's just scarring and trauma and abuse can really uh, distort thought patterns, can distort nervous system, can distort the senses, and depending on what has occurred, uh, can distort the soul and spirit, can distort the soul and spirit. And so, you, you folks, I repeat, you cannot know by uh, how someone is dressed or what they're telling you what's going on behind the curtain. Pray each day for a spirit of discernment. And then when the Holy Spirit drops it on you, listen, respect, be grateful and obey. I need to back up here. I didn't say you need to do it in a nasty way. I didn't say you need to do it in a nasty way. You can be very discreet. You can be classy. You can be kind. I've needed to do this myself. I never, you know, I, I just don't use that heavy hand because oftentimes th these, these traumas that people have gone through that have left them scarred behaviorally, emotionally, is nothing they set out to do. So I do have the compassion. But at the same time, I also understand that these issues left unchecked, untreated, can morph into some precarious and dangerous situations. And, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm careful because I'm not going to say that this is always the case. But look, it only takes one time. It doesn't take three or four times. It takes one time uh, to mess up your life. Please pay attention to what you're feeling. If you yourself, if you know, look, there are some things that need to get sorted out within me. Look, raise your hand. Raise your hand. Beautiful place to start is building a beautiful grounded relationship with God. Then get into some resources. Get into some books. Get into a therapeutic situation. Ask God, what do I need to do from here? Listen, you will be instructed. But, but again, I repeat, listen to the spirit of discernment. It is real. You don't need to be paranoid out here, but you need to be paying attention. It is real. Thank you so much, and I'll catch up with you soon.